My name is Amanda Fruta. I am the Public Affairs and Communication Specialist at Carolyn Campagna Kleefeld Contemporary Art Museum. Um, and I'm here with Josh Garcia, um, who heads up Inspired LBC, and Elizabeth Lunzon, who is the director of Flatline Gallery in North Long Beach. So we're going to be talking about the collaborative curatorial project um, Careers of Hope, which is presented by Port City Creative Guild. So many different arts organizations from all over Long Beach collectively curated this show, um, which is all about bringing people together and encouraging connection um, and really fostering hope within not just the artistic community, but the community at large and um, connects through an art exchange program, um, Long Beach Unified School District students with local artists. Before I get to talking about our artists, I wanted to open it up to Josh and Elizabeth and we can have an open conversation about why this project is so exciting and um, you know what our organizations do in the community and maybe some of some more details about the artists that um, have been selected uh, for each from each of our organizations. Yeah, I was gonna say ladies yeah. first. Ladies first, okay. <laughs> Elizabeth, you wanna talk about your group or what your takeaways of the project um, are? Yeah, when I first found out about the project, I was really stoked about it because I have never seen all these organizations come together in one exhibition. Right. And so I was really curious to see how was that going to look and how the artists were going to participate. Also, um, just the idea about making artwork on envelopes, I thought was really interesting because envelopes come in all shapes and sizes and colors. And so just um, I love that they gave the artist the freedom to choose any envelope. So it could have been new or used or you know any shape even some artists decided to make their own envelopes wow so, yeah so i thought you know they because they had a vision and i guess they couldn't find the the envelope that that they needed um so they ended up making their own envelopes um one of my artists jose losa he made his own envelope so he has um a woman uh on on the front of his envelope and he and it has like a hand and she and it has like he he cut the border out which I thought was really interesting how he was able to like change even change the shape of the envelope but that's awesome I mean male art is there's a long tradition of male art um and I think building upon um that kind of historic background and bringing it into today is really interesting from an art historical point of view, but also, you know, during the pandemic when so many of us are um, either at home or under-resourced in other ways, like using materials that are readily available to be creative and to express ourselves is so crucial. And just like what objects in our households can we use to draw inspiration from? Um, what surfaces can we draw on? So that's another thing that came to mind for me. Yeah, that's super creative. Like uh, just using, like creating, you know, his own envelope because he couldn't find it. And I think that's what's so the beautiful thing about art and like expressing yourself and uh, just using that uh, different, yeah, different, totally different medium. Yeah, and then touching back on how you said it brings it brings people, this exhibition brought people together. I think a lot of artists that are part of these, this exhibition didn't know of all the other organizations that were a part of that of the exhibition. So once they saw the list, they're like, oh, you know, who's that? Or where, you know, where, what museum is that? So they were able to see other, or not only like physical locations and museums, but also other organizations that might not have a physical location that you can go and visit, but they do pop-ups and events all over all over the city like like Josh I know you do that with um, Inspired LBC so I think um, it was cool that people were able to find out you know that we're here and be able to connect that way and see what everybody else is doing so it gave us more of a sense of 
of, of strengthening the art community within Long Beach in that sense. 100%. Definitely. I think it, um, and also too, it's cool because like I think over the past, you know, I would say four or five years, you know, I, I feel every year, like it's, it's like this art renaissance, you know, that's happening mm -hmm. it's, it's growing and getting, you know, inspiring other people, you know, and, and touching other people um, and seeing like, I don't know, I'm just like super, super happy to be a part of it all, you know, which is kind of cool. It's like a Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, it feels like we're, you know, we're, we do have so much agency and so much more um, empowerment when we come together like this. Um, Long Beach is a huge city and it has an amazing community spirit, but oftentimes it's like people are more familiar with their hyper locality or their neighborhood or region and mm -hmm. they're connected to, you know, the communities that they're familiar with. So I just, I also see this project as a way to kind of, yeah, raise awareness about arts organizations, also other areas and other mediums, like a lot of the artists that Christina Newhouse curated, she's our curator of exhibitions for this exhibition, um, are artists who work in multimedia and many different disciplines. Um, and that kind of aligns with the fact that as an organization, we are very interested in kind of arts integrated learning and this kind of cross-disciplinary exploration. Um, so even beyond the visual arts, like how do art and science connect? How can a painting be a sculpture? You know, like how, how do we cross these lines um, and then expand our minds in doing so, right? So um, it's just a really cool opportunity to see what pieces um, were submitted and what media that people used. Like Biddy Tran, uh, one of our artists actually, speaking of making envelopes, right? Uh, she made uh, an envelope out of cane reeds. So it's actually woven. I can share my screen really quick. It, it's so yeah. <laughs> wild. So in that sense, it's it's a sculpture. So you see here, it's, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's this, uh, it's actually that's like yeah. woven, like a basket, like basket work or, How long did and then How her long other work, take? sorry, Josh. How long did that take her? I don't know. Like I have so many questions for these, yeah. these artists. So yeah. see no, for no, all, no. this other piece. I can I can just go through our, our gallery. So yeah. here this is this is our gallery. <laughs> um you know, her other piece, uh, Malala, which uh is a portrait of Malala Yousafzai. Um she was the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner. Wow. And that's also on um some kind of woven object yeah I see that um Connie DK Lane I like the colors on that like that lime green what does it say on those yeah. dots there on the little stickers yeah it says um please open at your mask here uh so then she has a little drawing yeah. of a, a mask you could a mask inside what it, it might be so I know that's another question I had was like, did they put stuff inside the envelopes too? That or, would be actually you know? interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, and but then a lot of these artists are CSU will be alum too. Um, so I just want to highlight that because wow. there's so many talented artists that come out of Cal State Long Beach and the Cal State uh, University system in general. So here's another this awesome from, from Biddy. Um, that's Abraham Lincoln <laughs> um, and it looks like she has some other kind of paper strips here. Um, Katie DiCarlo is also uh, a CSULB alum and she, I love these abstract yes. works and, and this like, just like free form. I think these are probably stickers mm -hmm. on the, the type here. Um, what language is that like? I. It looks like Italian to me. 
Yeah, I was going to say Italian. Yeah, if I had to guess, I would say it looks like Italian. But um, yeah, uh, the museum is very focused on visual abstraction. So uh, love the, ab the bright, <laughs> vibrant abstraction. Hillary Norcliffe made kind of an abstracted architectural looking work here on a Cal State Long Beach envelope. <laughs> I want to talk about that. Like what, what type of envelopes they're put on, you know, because they have the right. so cool. Yeah. And I love her other piece where it's actually ripped and then she's integrated these like pieces of fabric and threads too. Wow. It's just so many different ways to manipulate the materials. And then she has, you know, a yeah. figurative piece that's just like yeah it's so totally <laughs> yeah go ahead josh sorry oh no sorry it's like totally different you know like you have from the architecture you know the white pieces and then you have this full color like you said figurative piece that's cool yeah, yeah. It's a representation of like everything she does it almost looks like they're three different artists but mm -hmm. i know it's yeah super interesting and, you know, I, that's another thing I thought about is like a lot of artists submitted works that were so disparate that it's like, I think they really relished in this opportunity to um, have a totally new take on each work, you know? And then here's another one from her that um, is, I think, oranges, right? So, and that's just like a natural scene, but she's made the stamp, the postage stamp um, into a sun, which is really cute. <laughs> um, yeah, and Betsy Laura Hall, Bet sorry, Whoa, yeah. cat's got my tongue. Betsy Laura Hall, um, who's also the director of Flux Art Space, um, submitted some works for us that are very cool and use geometric abstraction and also stickers. I just love the use of stickers, like kind of plays off the stamps. Mm -hmm. feels really fun that's cool um and then another piece here I feel like a lot of artists and of ours and also other artists from other orgs used words but not in like a prose way it was kind of like poetic like you know it's a lot of different ways we can interpret yeah. it yeah I um, think that, yeah, that too. yeah um, and then Juan Gomez has like a stitching kind of detail with some flowers, um, taking the good from the bad. And then, you know, Abel Alejandrez is, uh, we love Abel. He, he showed in one of our recent exhibitions called Call and Response that we did with Slanguage Studios. Um, and he's a fabulous printmaker uh, that is here in Long Beach. And he has another work here. You can see it. It's, just, it's <laughs> such a talent with his woodblock prints. I That's would, crazy. I <laughs> cannot believe his line work. Um, wow. But yeah, I, we really like his work. Um, and he was also, Christina also included him in another exhibition she curated for Angel's Gate. Um, art center recently so wow. um, love that yeah. and then here he is right here a, a young yeah. a young picture of the artist with some friends brothers so these must be his brothers which is nice that's cool with the ants too on the top <laughs> I know that is so cool I know was I that printed, like did he print uh, that on paper or was that on a, a piece of wood you know um I think it's in I don't know well it's a silk screen so oh, he it. printed it from a silk oh, screen it says and it then, right there <laughs> <laughs> well I probably had to scroll down um and you can see the top of the envelope at the top there mm -hmm. um and then I thought Angela Angela's piece Angela Wilcox's piece was really interesting because it you know I don't know if that's cut out like whenever I see this stuff, I just want to handle it. You know, I'm just want to like yeah. pick it up and, and handle it. it because it's like, did she cut this out? Is it folded back? Like these figures. Um, That's and nice. yeah, I think it's interesting that there's like, it, I don't know if it's two pictures. I think she froze. Two scenes. 
-hmm. just questions. And then there's she, Angela has, a, here's some great, uh, looks like monarch butterflies. Um, but there's a cool like comic book kind of text in here. And then this is one of my favorite ones, this next one with the cheetah and the kind of flora and fauna all together cool. um, over, you know, the Priority envelope, envelope text. It's just, I love when there's a lot going on like this. Yeah. Um, and then Noah Thomas has a nice geometric um, abstraction that is an alcohol marker. Um, it just makes me want to to doodle. Yeah. And then some some more geometric shapes, a hex pattern. Doing that, um, type, doing this type of artwork, I found has been it's like very therapeutic. You know. Oh yeah. That's, it really, it lowers your cortisol levels. Even if you're doing art for just 15 minutes, it'll, it, really? yeah, it reduces your stress hormones and it calms your body and mind. So it doesn't matter how much, if you think you have talent or if you think you don't, it's just the act of like sketching or drawing or doing anything um, creative is very, helpful. And then Sarah Arnold. Um, and I should say, Noah Thomas is a CSU LB alum. And so is Sarah C. Arnold. And she has some peppers here. Um, and some kind of abstracted landscapes, which I love. Uh, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, San Pedro Hill. Um, it always, almost kind of reminds me of like, if you're in a car, you know, and you're like looking and it, and the landscape is moving. It kind of reminds me of that. And then hillside. So that is our gallery. And yeah. let me just go to your guys' gallery and you guys can talk about those. How does that I'll sound? Our space. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So if anyone is wondering. That's such a cool, cool uh, photo. And that gallery, the way that they uh, outlined it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, like super lit at night oh the lighting is great at night um so Elizabeth, it is that photo right yeah photo. yeah I that went around really like cool. right before the sunset and like around twilight and it was like the perfect lighting for it yeah I saw that I was like Ooh. yeah that came out really clean I'm jealous because none of my photos have come out good. You can stop by <laughs> um I guess time. it's just <laughs> Trial and error, right? Two, uh, so I'll just go to Flatline because that's the one I just opened. So, um, okay. And now we're in Flatline's gallery. Yeah, and the first artist is Juan Gomez, which is an artist that we both share in the exhibition. So if you Double see the feature. wall, yeah. So if you see the wall, he has one like. Uh, the Kleffeld is right next to Flatline and they lined oh, up all his pieces together. So nice. there, like, he has one on yours and two on mine. So I thought that was interesting. And it's kind of yeah. like, you know, it continues his narrative, but within the both both uh, spaces that curated him into the exhibition. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So Juan Gomez and then Tita. Um, Tita's a local Long Beach artist. She has a studio at the Ice House and she's also a powwow artist. She has a, a mural on Anaheim and, and Gaviota um, right beneath um, Governor's Boxing Club, uh, Club. So if you're ever in the area, check out her mural. It's, it's awesome. It's like super long and detailed. I love it. Um, but yeah, she did um, three envelopes for the exhibition. Um, their marker acryl and acrylic paint, she is really influenced by um, her culture and her surroundings. She's, she grew up in, um, in Cambodia town. So she's really influenced by, by um, her culture. And then next is Stephanie Hahn. Stephanie Hahn is one of the founding members of, of Art Clout. So I don't know if you guys mm. are familiar with Art Clout, but mm -hmm. they're another group within Long Beach that curates exhibitions or, or d 
did or like pre-COVID did events where artists had the opportunity to to network with each other and hang out and get to know um, the local, you know, the local artists and art orgs within Long Beach. Okay, so I she did this envelope and um, I really love how she painted the with acrylic on it and mm -hmm. the window in the envelope kind of serves as like, or it kind of gives the illusion of, you know, you're, you're either like in the an aquarium and yeah. like, like a window and um, maybe there's like people looking at you. And if you look closely too, she had made that stamp. Oh, that's so cool. There. That's yeah. I love the like under the sea, but in the aquarium. Yeah. Dynamic. And these are the next two are also hers. She has mm. these. Um, looks like she she painted on paper and then um, cut out the shapes and then put them over the envelope that she also painted on and all her stamps are handmade. So she made that. I think that was such a, a cute little detail within her artwork. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, and then you have the hummingbird. Um, I also got uh, like how she opened up the envelope and I saw that some of your artists did too. They, you know, they mm -hmm. opened up the envelope and it gave them more surface space to work with. And it also changed the the shape of the artwork so now it's it's not mm -hmm. just like a rectangle you know rectangular or square shape but it's got this like really unique shape mm -hmm. so you really get to see the whole shape of the envelope and then she added she added some gold leaf on there yeah I love that the stamp says soar too mm -hmm. yeah, that's really cute yeah next is Megan she actually she um she did a mural recently uh, right when the, oh, well, not too recent anymore, but when the first shutdown happened and uh, the Arts Council for Long Beach was, I think it's with the Arts Council or um, either them or with Bixby, but she did a mural on Bixby Knowles from the, on the wood, um, the, the wood coverings that were covering the windows and the businesses during like the, um, when the, the riots were happening and and all of that. So she did a really beautiful mural on on the wood and at Nikki's Sports or Nikki's Shoe Store. I forget the name. Is um is um her handle Mara Bubblegum? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and her I think cool. Did, sorry, I think she did another one downtown also around the same time. Yeah. So I, I um, love this piece. Mm -hmm, I love it. Yeah, I love the colors that she used and the just how the figure is really detailed the portrait but then mm -hmm. her clothes and her hair is just like a solid shape also um i believe there's lace in there so she put lace inside oh. the envelope that you can see through oh. the window of the envelope very cool this fish reminds me of like fantasia you know yeah yeah. yeah right I like her, her palette. It's very like light, very airy. Mm -hmm. I love that periwinkle. That's, That's cool. very, one of my favorite colors. Oh, and and here, next, here you are. Yeah, the next three are mine. So I carried it, I carried it myself into the exhibition. There you go. Um, I just, you know, I thought it was a, an awesome project. And as an artist myself, I wanted to be part of the exhibition too. So mm -hmm. knowing that they were gonna work with local uh, LBUSD students, I I thought about that and how um, the the students were going to view the artwork. So I'll, I also wanted to create imagery that connected with the with the students. So imagery that um, that I think would have encouraged me to or gave, would have given me hope as a student myself. Mm -hmm. So um, just you know, simple imagery I did uh, like fingers crossed to like hope for something better mm -hmm. and um, keep moving forward, which is a quote that that really stuck with me when I saw um, that Disney movie, Meet the Robinsons. I don't know if you guys have seen it, where mm -hmm. he's like he's like this orphan kid and he keeps um, making inventions that, that don't turn out the way he thinks they're gonna turn out or they keep blowing <laughs> up. And so he just, you know, he 
he goes into the future and he meets his family and then the the they keep telling him oh you just got to keep moving forward and keep moving forward but yeah it's a really good movie you should you should watch it i don't want to give too much so that kind of really stuck with me you know if you think you know the situation is bad now you just got to you know keep moving forward and eventually you know you either learn from it or something really cool comes out of that i want to send you um actually uh, i love that that piece by the way and that yeah those three words are so like powerful and like even the imagery is like it's it's beautiful you know what i mean it's like, yeah. it's like boring oh, um, i want to tag you on a video i i created a video called keep moving forward on that oh no channel. way yeah oh, so, so yeah you. yeah send it to me and the next is just uh luchadora which is um like fighter i guess in spanish uh but like the female version of it and so i wanted to do like this female figure um as like a the a mexican wrestler Yes. Is it you, Elizabeth? I was just gonna no. ask. <laughs> no, it's not me. <laughs> no, yeah. I used a, a, a reference image, and then I just changed it up a bit. Um, and I wanted to simplify, like the style. This is like the first time I, I really do something more, um, more like an illustration, or I guess more like mm. a, a cartoon. So I wanted to play around with that. Kind of like going back to how I would draw in high school. So I was thinking, like, okay, like where was where was like my mind in high school and how did like what kind of images was I drawn to so it's something more more simple that I knew that I could like either like recreate or or take bits of and put it back into my artwork nice I like how you use like different uh types of envelopes too you know oh yeah the manila then you got the priority mail then you got that yeah thing. it was fun it was fun to see like what you could do with with each envelope yeah that's cool like it. Okay. Ooh, ooh, Karina. <laughs> yeah, next yeah. is Karina. I worked with Karina right before the shutdown. She was in the last exhibition where I was able to have like actually um, uh, an opening reception. And so I just really, I loved her work um, and I wanted to work more with her. And so when um so the way i curated the artists into this exhibition is artists that i worked with before and you know i like to work with also artists that i would like to work with more and i reached mm -hmm. out to a few people um i think one or two artists that i've never worked with before and mm -hmm. i wanted to work with them so that's kind of like the way i i curated some of my artists into this exhibition that way i'm mm -hmm. not you know i i'm not reaching out to the same people and um, I can, uh, I'm also able to um, work with different, different artists in the community. Nice. Yeah, I, but I, I really love like how- I mean, it's compositions, you know? Like, mm -hmm. all of, like, it's, I don't know, it's, it's like fun, it's playful, it's light. And I think she really considered the fact that this is going to be art that was going to be shared with LBUSD students. I think of all ages, um, because I mean, to me, the the right hand and left hand works, um, you know, holding a stuffed animal, it seems very like comforting. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I love stuffed animals as a kid. So I'm sure some students yeah. will love that. Yeah, who doesn't have like uh, a teddy bear that they loved on, you know, and they're young. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, naturally, <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually at first glance, it's, um, it's like very, light and and colorful but she was actually inspired by um the kids that are in detention centers uh the immigrant kids oh my gosh so these are some of the objects that they they hold to keep to give them comfort and hope well wow. that's pretty profound um i was i was wondering if the blue specks were tears or rain um or something else so that actually contextualizes that those mm -hmm. ideas for me too wow yeah, that's be. deep yeah. okay next group and next is diana sanchez um she's an artist that i've never worked with before but i always admired her work she's an illustrator and um also, I, what I liked about, like, I love her illustrations and also I really wanted to work with her because I feel like I haven't worked with too many illustration, illustrators in the past. And so I thought, you know, this, this project would, was going to be perfect for her. And so really like how, um, and I kind of, 
her work and um, the previous work, they kind of like um, relate to each other. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you look at her earrings, it says abolish eyes. So I like how they're like right after one another. Oh, and yeah. So her earrings say abolish eyes. And um, well, and then you have the monarch butterfly, which represents um, immigration. Mm. Yeah, and the next work is Edgar Martinez, and he's a, a new printmaker. And so, um, let me see, he's also my partner. So, uh -huh. <laughs> shout out, Edgar. <laughs> yeah, so he's also my partner, and, it, and this is the first time like I talk about his work. So I'm just like, oh wow, like this is interesting, you know. <laughs> So he's a he's a he's a new printmaker. He started printmaking around quarantine when quarantine mm, started. He killed it. He just killed like it. he picked it up really quick. Um, nice. I just I just love how, you know, he he's really focusing on the negative and positive space, and he also has all these um, symbolism and references to to immigration. So that's why you see the monarch butterfly again, and you see, you know, the sun and some cactuses, maybe like in a desert. And wow. so, yeah, I just really encouraged him to, you know, to keep moving forward with his art and like, nice. like keep trying new techniques and, you know, just put his stuff out there because I really love it and it's coming out really great. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And more, are these more monarch butterflies? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I, I just, well, I looked up monarch butterfly symbolism because, you know, Angela had monarch butterflies in hers too. And I guess it also symbolizes like the power to achieve your goals. Oh. So that's appropriate for, or that you're on the right path. Like if you see a monarch butterfly flying, that it's like a good omen for the path that you're on. Wow. Mm, nice. Yeah. yeah. There's another butterfly where he was experimenting with texture, um, the butterfly over texture. That's cool. That looks cool. Gold on black. Or, it yeah, cool. it reminds me of like the Japanese cloud kind of pattern sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then we have Jose Losa, which he made his own, his own envelope. Um, oh, cool. And this is a, one of his illustrations with uh, with watercolor so watercolor acrylics and I really love that he's been lately he's been experimenting with with all kinds of mediums and his thing is recently too is is um making artwork with with easily accessible mediums mm -hmm. um and so that's why also I thought this project was was a really good fit for him and then yeah have James Brooks. Um, I've also I've only worked with him once before. So and I really love his artwork. So I really wanted to to work with him again. And and he's also an illustrator. So I thought he was like, I don't know, for some reason I was like, oh like illustrators were gonna be perfect for this. And I haven't really worked with illustrators. So I put a few into I curated a few into the exhibition. Nice. He has one more. The next one is also James. Oh, okay. I love that the vines are connecting them like that too. I like, well, the, the title is Reaching Out. So yeah. um, I like how it, it's encouraging to reach out. Maybe if you're like in a, in a not so good place, it's always good to reach out to somebody you trust. And, you know, so that I think, I feel like that always helps because you know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Just like checking in on, on checking in on our people, you know, our friends, our family. Yeah. Sweet yeah yeah for sure especially a long way you know like just a simple hello or like a, oh yeah like i don't know like sometimes like you'll say something and then people will hold on to that be like that got me through x or other right color. you know that's that's cool you never know how you're going to help somebody just by staying connected mm -hmm. the next one is also james's and i love with this one you can't really tell from the image but when you see it in person he cut out the flowers and like put them oh the that's cool nice and i love how it's like the flower outside the pot <laughs> yeah. yeah gives it dimension and mm -hmm. i love how it says share the sunshine mm -hmm. that's cool um next one catherine um i love catherine's 
little illustrations of the cats are kind of like represent a representation of all of us in quarantine and her image her the titles of her work they're called the shut-in society so you got the shut-in society one and two and she was inspired by um this old book or like zine I don't know, I can't remember from when, maybe like the 1950s around that time. And it was called The Shut-In Society. And these, all these letters that were submitted to get published in this book that uh, of people who had really intense social anxiety and um, just their experiences of always being inside. And so she said that she, you know, serendipitously found it while we were in quarantine because it's kind of like, you know, the journal of somebody who can't leave their house and it's really, it, it really, um, I had a lot of similarities to what people were going through when, when the shutdowns, shutdowns uh, first happened. So it's where she got the inspiration from not only the imagery, but the titles for her, for her work. Wow. Nice. And I like how she used the envelope too, those envelopes that uh, some of the cities were, were sending out. So it says like, get covered, stay covered. And they were sending out uh, oh. masks in these envelopes. Oh, I was going to ask, is that part of the envelope or is that drawn on there? Because I couldn't tell if that was like applique or interesting. Yeah, yeah it was part of the envelope. Cool. OK, that looks like the last one. Yeah, that's it. That's so cool. Very cool. Thank you for sharing all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I, now, love, what I love about like uh, this project is like every artist is like, you know, it's like a little timestamp of what like they were going through or what we were going through, you know what I mean? And each, um, yeah, each one has like a little story to it, which is really awesome. I agree. I, I love all the stories. I think Inspired LBC is probably after or it's not in alphabetical order. Okay. Oh, here we go. Got it from the bottom. <laughs> Found it. Okay. Inspired LBC. What? Um, so I just take it away from here? Yeah, go for yeah, it, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so essentially, what we do is uh, we collaborate with cre- creatives uh, to produce uh, you know, uh, content, unique products, marquee events, dynamic installations. Um, what I'm loving is like, we can pretty much execute on anything creative Mm -hmm. and I'm just following my curiosities, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's leading me down this really cool path. Um, so we curated, uh, some artists that we already had through our Hello Welcome, uh, group exhibitions and just pretty much all the, all the homies, you know, uh, RFX one, uh, we got growth spurt. I really, really love his artwork. Um, and how it's kind of evolved. Uh, mm-hmm. He primarily does like geometric space, um, like you're in uh, a spaceship and alien work. So uh, it's cool that he's now applying it to hope, right? Where it's just like, we have this little growth spurt. Um, yeah, next, cool. we have Joey Stupor. And it's so cool because like he does like little blob dudes. Um, both uh, pretty much everybody on this on this roster is a muralist um and they've worked you know with hello welcome and inspired lbc as well but his work is amazing uh and i'm so, so surprised that he did it in black and white all black and white uh yeah. which is really cool um there's two different landscapes uh the first one on uh in the middle there if you look all the way down the horizon you see the heart Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys can see that, which is really cool. Yeah. Because um, I think that's really, you know, kind of what we're going for, right? Like, I feel like uh, when we create from love is like when you get the best work, right? So landscape two, you have two people, uh, which looks to me like they're looking at, I would think like a sunset. What do you guys think? Yeah, sunset, or I don't know, when you said love about the other one, I thought maybe that, mm. uh planet or shining star or symbol maybe that means hope you know since it's couriers of hope um and they're kind of looking towards it I like how the shapes especially in the second one kind of like morph like you're not sure if you're looking at hills or clouds 
like you know yeah. lot, lots of different kind of things to wonder about and I like that yeah all right so uh, move oof Kiki so she does amazing amazing line work um and these are two just illustrations that she did. Um, both of them are front to back, back to front. Um, I'm very excited for whoever receives this <laughs> because it's just really, really detailed. Um, you have Red Sea hair and then ever-changing lands. Uh, it looks like, I really like the bottom on the right where it has a dragon. Oh and yeah. You have like her, her line work on the waves are really cool. Um, I feel like I always work really big. So thinking about just like packing in all this detail in a smaller envelope, like in a small envelope is, um, it's a lot of work, even though, you know, it's, it's not a big piece. I love it. Yes. Yeah. I like that the, her crown, uh, looks like, um, like towers or something like there's, again, there's like a lot of different things you can see, um, if you look closer. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love about, you know, just art, just having this, these type of conversations, you know? Um, okay, so we'll move on to the next. Uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, Ajax Kelly, Radiant Love. I love this piece um, just because, you know, it's straight to the point, super impactful. The colors of his work is, it's very fun. So uh, I think, during this time, you know, just spreading love to everybody, like just having it radiate from like who you're being, I feel is super important. Kind of like what um, that artist who is uh, reaching out, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's just tying back into Curious of Hope. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to this next piece, <laughs> Cosmic Nurturing, uh, he's a plant guy, him and his, uh, his wife, I mean, a huge, like, it's like one of the rooms is like a jungle, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool. Like um, just, you know, giving someone flowers, it comes from a good place. You know, when I look at that, this piece, it's just like, hey, here's, you know, just a little something for you. And it's coming from a place of, of, of joy. He actually used to live in, in uh, our building. So it was me, Jairo, who's the one next that we're going to talk about. And then Jack and what we do, we just drop off, you know, just little tokens of like, oh, here's some ice cream or, hey, what do you, you know, you want some coffee? And it's those, those little small things go a really long way. So um, just to brighten people's day. So that's, that's definitely what I get from that. Um, what do you guys, what's your guys' take on it? Um, I mean, I'm thinking about how many more plants people are caring for, <laughs> uh, or how many more plants people have acquired uh, in, you know, 2020 and 2021. Um, it's, I feel like that's been a big lifestyle shift and it is, you know, at the heart of it about nurturing and, you know, caring for the world around you and, you know, and your own environment and in, in doing so, that's like a, a way to provide yourself self-care too. So that was just, those were my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And they also make you, they just make you feel good. Just caring for a plant, watching it grow. Yeah. And definitely. You really get into it and then you get excited about like, you know, getting a different kind or, or within the same family. Mm -hmm. so, the growth. Yeah. The growth. I love watching like new growth in plants you know yeah. you bud and you're yeah like, oh, and you just kind of you know that's super cool all right hi ro uh, mr sandoval um this is like like what, what i was talking about earlier it was so amazing um when this project had hit because you know i've just with all the relationships with all these artists like getting to see them go through life um and really have conversations around these pieces. And uh, Jairo just had his baby girl, I think that the day that he created these pieces. Mm. Um, she's beautiful. Uh, you have growth on the left, which is it's beautiful, you know, like surrounded by plants and, you know, him seeing his daughter for the first time. And I love that they they have that like uh, connection, you know, and what better like hope 
that are symbol of hope, then new life, right? Which is the second piece. Yeah, so, so really, sweet. I really, really love these pieces. And like he had, you know, like I said, we had these like little tokens. We were unable to meet up at the time because obviously, you know, he had just had a baby, but right. uh, he had dropped these off. Like under, he slid it under the door. And when I saw it, like, I just felt it. You know what I mean? I felt like I almost really made a tears like, cause it was so like, so beautiful. Um, so that's Hiro's piece. Shout out Hiro. Oh, shout out everybody, but you know. <laughs> Vlad, oh. So speaking of like, you know, the whole thing that happened with like COVID and uh, Black Lives Matter. When I think mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the people that had the boots on the ground like Vladimir was a huge, he was like a heart. He was a heart of the city during that time. You know, he provided a lot of hope. So um, I've been in communication with Vlad for some time and we kind of just like, just chatted back and forth. And I figured this would be, this is like a perfect project, you know? And so he, he dropped two pieces. Um, I think these are in French, uh, Espoir, which is, which stands for hope and joy, right, which, which stands for joy. And I think that for him, like, that's definitely what he's he's been doing for, not just through his artwork, but just who he is as a person. Um, so those are those two pieces. Wanted to see what you, uh, you ladies thought on those. Um, I, I'm trying to, on the second one, is it like, uh... is that like a like, ball? Yeah, it's like, it's like three kids just like, playing football or or he's hitting it off his head like a soccer move because it looks like it's going from the crouching child's head to the uh kid in the middle like they're I in the blue pants passing it yeah but it's very joyful overall I, well, it looks like they're hit they're hitting it to each other it's like one two and three. oh yeah the third it's one like is two. involved too oh very yeah cool. i see that nice. yeah i love the energy in these and like just the like the smiling kids. It's like one of those like really contagious smiles and just wanna like get out there and like have fun and play after looking at this. Yeah, it reminds me of like running through the sprinklers or something. Like it's very childlike kind of uh, positive vibes. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. And he did this, he, he was in the middle of doing a mural while doing these pieces. So shout out to Vlad for that. He works, he works really hard. Um, Eric, Eric Michael, I'm actually wearing his hat and his, his sweatshirt right now. But um, with Eric Michael, he is, uh, this was hoping for brighter days. He actually did it on an EDD um, uh, envelope, which is kind of cool. And he's been doing a lot of studies within flowers. Um, and the whole concept behind that is giving people their, you know, giving people their flowers. Um, so for this, he submitted this piece, um, which is a, a daisy, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I think so. I think it is a daisy. Yeah, and he did it in like, you know, little monochromatic, black and white, and then you know the top corners are are colored in, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's hard to tell because of the quadrants of the colors, it, but mm. it could it could be a zinnia. I'm not sure, mm. but I like it either yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> I like the like color blocking behind it too. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, next, Oops. Mr. Jonathan Martinez, Art of the Endangered. You can find them. Um, all of them are on Instagram. Um, but his pieces are super amazing. Um, you have the little messenger. I don't know what what bird. Like he knows all the like he paints primarily endangered species. Um, I don't know what type of bird that is, but um, it really looks amazing. And then you have the keen eye. I really love like the, the black, the drips of black that he does on there um, on some of his pieces because his uh, compositions are like, uh, his animals are so detailed. And I love like the splatters on the, on the back. It reminds me of um, some of the Walton Ford pieces that we have in the collection that are um, really like hyper-realistic uh, bird images. So that's yeah. what it makes me think of. And I like this other little bird has like a little halo. It's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen unless you guys want me to go back to anything. Oh. No. Um, and we can go back to convo mode. And yeah, what a great sharing session this has been. Um, let's see. Can we talk about hope? Because I've been, you know, from the project, right? And I'm sure every artist and even the curators did this as well, is contemplated like what hope is for them or mm -hmm. what hope means or, you know, and you also thought about, you know, which artist would, would, would best fit, but just wanted to get your, your ladies take on, you know, just hope in general or, you know, how you intend to put that out there. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's been, I mean, I think 2020 and just the recent <laughs> social and cultural moments we've been in um, have been difficult and it's been making um, hope that much more important for us. Um, and the way that we find hope um, has, I think, diversified. Like there's been a lot of looking inward um, at least for me, but I think that can be said about many of us um, just because of the circumstances. We, I mean, there's hope all around us um, in stories that friends share. Um, I don't know. I think it's, it's really important just as a motivator and as something that works in tandem with like your personal values in, in moving forward in life. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. Elizabeth. Yeah, totally. Same, I was gonna say, you know, it's just about finding, the, finding those random moments of hope in your everyday, um, everyday situations, interactions, or even just like, uh like small moments when you know like we were talking about plants and just watching them grow or seeing new growth um it's just how not only could it be like something like really literal but maybe something that's less explainable just something that you feel mm. you know that's okay too if you know you you feel hope but you don't know exactly how to explain it or you know interpret it but knowing that it's there just um hunger games uh-huh for the first time no 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 oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um but it was so crazy right because um it's crazy how things kind of recur in your life or things kind of pop up in your life you know um when you least expect it but there's a quote on hope and if you watch the first hunger games you'll see what i'm talking about but uh snow he says hope is the only thing stronger than fear and I was like, ah, that's it, you know, because kind of like what you ladies were just talking about, like when you have a sense of hope or you see the light at the end of the tunnel, that's kind of what pushes us forward. And I think, you know, in 2020, we got hit with a lot of uppercuts, a lot of uppercuts, you know, yeah. like personally, as a country, internet, you know, as, a, you know, a species, we all got just uppercutted in our own little ways. And I think the beauty of this project, right, Careers of Hope is like, we're doing what we can within the arts to, to spread hope to others. Um, and so that kind of, you know, even for me, like in my journey, right, within creating art is like, I had, I created a piece called Glimmers of Hope you know, and it's just like finding the silver linings within the day or finding silver linings within, you know, the week, the month and like putting that out there. So um, that's kind of like my take on hope and also shout out to Hunger Games, you know, and I've <laughs> really been pulling a lot of inspiration from it, you know, because, um, you know, what Katniss, you know, what she stands for, what she's doing is like really inspirational. Um, yeah, and um, I just pulled up, that's why I was looking at my phone, because um, Port City Creative Guild, they've been doing some spotlights on their Instagram, and um, Hillary Norcliffe, who's one of our artists, responded to the questions that they sent out to the curators, too, 
yeah. um, actually giving advice to young artists and the thing that stuck with me or impacted me and what she said the most was keep your eyes open. There's always an idea in every sidewalk crack. So like, oh yeah, that idea that, you know, you never know what you're going to encounter that will inspire you that, you know, it's not like a logical thing, but like when we first went into lockdown, I just remember you know, <laughs> going on walks, leaving your house, going to the grocery store, like everything became like, you appreciate everything so much more. Mm -hmm. And you see everything in a totally different perspective when you are restricted um, in the sense that we've been restricted, right? So it's like <laughs> everything that's outside of yourself can can give you hope in different ways or can give you inspiration or excitement or uh, a jolt of creativity you know mm -hmm. um and that's the other thing i like about this project is like it's like what is just coming to mind like you know the artists uh were asked to create this work um and they had to do it fairly quickly so all of this stuff is like you it's kind of like the first take um is always the best, you know, like it, at least with, I'm, I'm thinking about music now, but <laughs> it's like the most natural, the most like open or like authentic expression. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy that there is going to be an exchange program so that we can continue to connect local artists with students. I mean, that gives me hope. I mean, giving a creative outlet um, and encouragement and empowerment to the next generation of artists and educators and citizens um, is really meaningful to me personally. And, you know, being a, a museum within a university that's, you know, care, showing care for the students and providing that service, even if it's just like sharing artwork, um, it just opens the door for so many different activities and so many different opportunities for growth and learning and finding hope and finding connection. So I, I'm just really happy that we get to have this conversation too. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. And thank you for thank you for inviting me for inviting us so we can yeah. you know, talk yeah. about this and see how we each decided to to curate the exhibition. And now we know a little bit more about about the artworks that are in in the show too so thank you guys yeah thank you for sharing and for yeah. being here and making time making space we really appreciate it and, and uh as we're closing up like i uh like we were talking about earlier like i, I really love like kind of to your point amanda is like you know the ability for the ex that exchange <laughs> program where students are able to exchange with artists that they look up to or artists that have you know that are currently doing what they aspire to right that gives these like college students hope you know that like yeah oh this person's doing this this oh this person i just saw her mural like uh, you know in, right. in town like and I, I get their work you know that i think that's a really uh that's meaningful you know for the next yeah. generation it's like we're it's like passing on the torch of inspiration you know of like what is possible yeah, and I think it's also to that point, you know, what is possible, right? It's like anything is possible if we put our mind to it and you can, you know, you can make work on an envelope, you can make work on a wall, you can make work on canvas. I <laughs> have made work on paper bags before, like sometimes you just want to grab it and make it happen. And I think there's a real beauty in that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think honoring your creative impulse is really nourishing and it's a way to, you know, communicate without words, just instilling that message to young people that, um, that their creativity is valid, that their artistic voice is relevant and valued regardless of what medium they work in or, um, these kinds of enterprises and coalitions and collaborations like this, I think, help um, 
just encourage people and empower people to come, not just to come together, but to like, just, you know, feel like express they can themselves. express themselves. Express themselves. And that's, I think, that's what I'm loving about like, like the, this experience, right? Is the ability to express yourself. And when you're fully self-expressed in who you are, whether that be in any medium, right? Whether that be in performance arts or music or visual, right? Like when you're fully self-expressed, I think that's when you're fully living, you know? Yeah. Oh, sorry to um, take off so soon, but I have that's another okay. another meeting. That no I have worries. To hop on. But thank All you right, guys cheers. so much for including me on this. And oh, thank hope you. To talk to you guys soon. All, All right. right. That was a good have care. a good one. Bye. Take care. Bye. See you guys.